Hey, Crazy Will here. Today we're going to be talking about the 2018 and 2020 MacBook Air. Is it worth upgrading to the new M1 chip? Stay tuned, we're going to find out. Hey, Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the 2018 versus the 2020. Should you upgrade? Is it really worth upgrading? Especially because it's a new chip, guys. It's the M1. Now, both these computers are mine, and both of them were bought by me. No one gave these to me. No companies reached out to me. Nothing. It's a small channel. Nobody really gives a crap. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel, you know that I've had my run-ins with Apple. Laptops, that is. The iMacs never really had a problem. My first Apple MacBook, or MacBook Pro to be exact, was the 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch. Spent almost $2,000 on it. My number one video is how to fix the graphics card problem because unfortunately Apple does have a track record of having problems with their laptops. Well, unfortunately this one was no exception. This is the 2018 MacBook Air. The problem with this one is the keyboard not only being lousy, but I have a little cover on there to prevent dust from getting down there, otherwise I may have problems. With with the keyboard sticking. Another issue I ran into, which you can see that video here, for some reason it just stopped charging out of nowhere. It wouldn't charge and they said it was a, just a pram reset that I needed to do, which I tried over and over and over again and apparently it had to go to Texas to get it fixed. Hmm. Other than that, I haven't had any problems with this laptop, including the keyboard, because I do keep the dust cover on. Now you might be asking yourself, Will, why are you buying another Mac? Well, I've had really good luck with their iMacs. They've been awesome. My wife has a MacBook Air, and that's why I switched over to the MacBook Air. And you can see that video here, why I decided to start going with the MacBook Air instead of a Pro. My wife has a 2013 MacBook Air, still running strong, battery still amazing, keyboard's awesome, everything is awesome on that computer. And believe it or not, it's 2013 and I could still get $300 for it. Yeah, they hold their value, guys, and it's a really good machine. Now, the M1 does have troubles as well. Now, they did change the keyboard. The keyboard is really, really good on this. But one of the issues that they were having, and which has been debugged, was that if you didn't have enough RAM, it would write to the hard drive. Which, if you do your research, you find out that most computers do that. If it runs out of RAM, it starts using the hard drive as RAM. Now, they said that this particular machine does it way more than any other machine. I haven't seen that. I do go to Activity Monitor. I've had this for two weeks now. The most I've ever seen is 500 megabytes being used as RAM. And that's it. So I haven't really seen that much rewrite, rewrite speed on my machine. I haven't had that issue. And many of your higher end YouTubers have debugged this already and show that it's not a problem. The issues that I had, and I've, I've seen it on other channels, is I had problems with this actually overheating. And it almost went back. But what I think the issue was is I downloaded something that wasn't working correctly with the system and it was making it overheat. I restarted it. Some programs weren't working. I did a pram reset on it. Everything kind of went back to normal. And then I was having an issue with charging again, like I did with that one. It wasn't charging. I have it plugged in overnight, and I'll show you an image of what it did. It shows that it's powered in, but it's not taking any power. So I was about to take it back to Best Buy and be like, forget it. It's, it this is just going to be another headache, another craziness that I'm going to go through. Instead of doing that, I reinstalled the operating system, and I haven't had any problems since. And then I I said, you know what? I'm going to put this computer through its paces. I'm going to really see if this is worth me holding on to. So I started treating it like I do my iMac because everybody said how amazing this is. Let me show you what I found. And I'm not big into benchmarks, but I'm going to show you these. I'm going to put them side by side. This is the benchmarks 2018 against the 2020 M1. Pretty significant considering this is only dual core and this is eight core. Now, as far as graphics, this one's only seven core and this is the base model, guys. I am not spending a ton of money on a new laptop. I just need a daily driver to do my scripts and do basic stuff. So I thought. So after seeing all these different reviews and seeing that people are saying that this is an amazing machine, well, and I thought maybe it should perform as well as my iMac back here, my 2015 iMac. And just in case you're wondering, let's see the bench score against the iMac. So the 2020 against the iMac. Very interesting. How's the real world performance? Let's see. All right, we're going to do a boot test. This isn't really important, but some people might want to see this. Both machines, all you have to do is hit a button on it and it'll turn on. So I'm just gonna hit the space bar.
And it looks like the M1 won. Still waiting on 2018. And I did close out all the apps to make sure there was no problem. One other thing that I did want to point out is the M1 is running at 34 degrees Celsius. The 2018 is running at 72 degrees Celsius already. So Intel definitely has a problem with their chips being hot, especially with the newer operating system. These are both running Big Sur. All right, time for the next test. I have a USB type C SSD, one terabyte. We're gonna be taking a look at regular video editing. All right, so I work with iMovie. This is last week's video. I did a security camera system that you can actually see above my desk and let's see what the playback looks like. Basically to break it down for you is if you have the DVR here and a camera here that has a good connection and this one's farther away and the camera can't be reached by the DVR because the Now it's running smooth working with the SSD around your house which is really nice. You can pick which one you want to do. As I move along you'll notice that it blanks out the video and you can't see anything in here which is not a big deal. As soon as I stop it repopulates itself but as it's playing and I move along it can't keep up with the video and it won't bring it up anytime soon either which is not a big deal it's playing the video back pretty well it's playing the sound back pretty well and i did already said in my review that you can edit on this machine so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're gonna export this out and we're gonna put it at the highest setting hd 1080p it's gonna be about 2.1 gigs so let's go ahead and render this i'm going to hit save and start on the same time ready go Now it says it's going to take about 14 minutes. I'm not going to run the video the whole time while I do that. So we're already at 22 seconds and it's saying 14 minutes. So I'm going to stop the video and then come back. All right, so I'm in the middle of rendering this. We're already about one minute and 11 seconds in. And I just want to show you right here, it's at 83 degrees Celsius already. I don't know if you could see that right here, but I have a little temperature monitor and we're already at 84 degrees Celsius. And now it's saying, it looks like it's already doing the throttling back. It's saying it's going to take around 20 minutes to do this. All right, so we're now seven minutes and 30 seconds into this. You can clearly hear the fan. I mean, it's really loud and we're steadily staying at 85 degrees, around 84, 85 degrees. It still says we have 16 minutes left, but you can hear, really hear that fan. All right, so now we're 11 minutes and 30 seconds in. Oh, we're finished. The time we got is 11 minutes and 41 seconds. All right, so now we're over at the MacBook Air 2020 M1 chip, opening up the same exact file as before. They actually have quite a nice selection of different cameras. Some are outdoor. This file has a lot of different mixture of videos. There is some 2K video in here, and there is some 1080p, but it's the same one we were looking at the 2018 MacBook, but now we're watching it on the M1, and this is actually 2K video. And you can see it's it's performing the same way. The only difference between this is if you use this for long periods of time, you will see a difference in performance as far as keeping up with what you're editing. The longer you edit for, the more complex it gets and it seems like it slows down quite a bit. I sort more on the 2018 than I did on this one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the render test right now. So I'm gonna hit save and start at the same time and we'll see how long it takes to render. Right off the bat, it says it's gonna take eight minutes opposed to the 20 minutes. Let's see how long it actually takes. All right, so we're a little over a minute in. The temperature is still at 41 degrees right now. It still says we're gonna be done in seven minutes. And just for those who wanna know, I use Keep Awake to keep the machine awake so that way it can render out my movies. So just in case anybody needs to know that information, there you go. All right, we're moving right along. It says it only has five minutes left. We're at almost three minutes now. The temperature is staying steady at 44 degrees Celsius. And not to mention that this is fanless, it does not have a fan, but you have two cores on the other one and you have eight here. This is where it should shine. All right, guys, we're done. Three minutes and 48 seconds. And we're successfully shared this movie. Same exact file three minutes and 48 minutes opposed to 11 minutes and 41 seconds. So, wow, that's. A significant amount of time if you're doing video editing which rendering is not the biggest deal like I said that's impressive it's actually scrubbing through it and actually working with it for long periods of time is where I've seen the benefit but there you go all right so the next thing I want to show you and we're still on the MacBook M1 I want to show you DaVinci Resolve because I was really impressed with the performance of DaVinci Resolve I'm running DaVinci Resolve 17 this is the app section of that video and I want to show you that scrubbing through 
really nice. The biggest thing that I saw with here was playback. Alright, so here we are on my phone. I'm running an iPhone 12. Okay, you saw how it spinned in there and worked out really well. Alright, so here we are on my phone. Shows the animation, and just to show you, we'll go into the fusion. Alright, so here we are on my phone. Right. And it works out really well. I really don't see the difference between working with this machine, which is a MacBook Air, against my 2015 iMac, with 16 gigs of RAM. This is the base model with just eight gigs of RAM, and I don't really see a difference between the two. I'm gonna show you the rendering now. We're gonna be working with H.264, because that's usually what I render them out in. These are all my preferences right here. It's gonna be a quick time movie. Time ready, go. About, we're a minute into this now. We're at 15%. Now my temperature is up to 57 degrees right now. So again, this is fanless and it's running. So we're at 18% and it's flying through this pretty quick. All right, so we're just about done. We're at 90%. It did get up to 73 degrees and we're almost six minutes into this. So let's see how long it's gonna take. All right, I stopped. Okay, this was one of the little glitches. I don't know if this is DaVinci Resolve or if it's actually the MacBook Air, the new M1 chip, but it says the render job failed. It did not fail, and I will show you because there's the file right there, and it plays absolutely fine, and that's what I used in my video. But the total render time was six minutes and 29 seconds. So not bad. Again, DaVinci Resolve version number 17. Again, same exact file. We're gonna go ahead and try and play this. Turn up the volume for you guys. Uh, all right, so here we are on my phone. I'm running an iPhone 12. Okay, as you can see, it's skipping frames like crazy. Can't do it. We'll turn down the resolution. We'll turn it down 50% and see if that'll actually run. Uh, all right, so here we are on my phone. Yeah, this is almost unworkable. <laughs> it's very frustrating. So basically what I would have to do if I wanted to work in this is to make proxies of this clip to make it work. I mean, that's not a big deal, but just by me messing around with this, the processor is already up to 84 degrees. That's a big deal. You know, you're trying to work and you got to worry about this overheating. It's still workable. I still don't regret buying this machine for what I was using it for, which wasn't heavy editing. It was just for basic things that I needed for my channel and simple browsing and stuff like that. Let's take a look at Fusion. So now we're in Fusion. Maybe this will work better. I mean, you could see it's just it's just not working great at all. Same resolution. We're gonna add it to render queue uh, right about now. All right, so we're one minute in, and already we're up to 87 degrees, and we're only at three percent. All right, as you see, the fans are really spinning up right now. We're at 88 degrees. It's staying steady there. We're right at the time that the M1 finished this, and we're only at 20 percent. That's it. All right, guys, we're at 97%. We're at 29 minutes and 22 seconds. That's how long this is taking. All right, just about 30 minutes it took. And yes, I sat here for 30 minutes trying to get this to finish. And again, it says render job failed. Clip couldn't process. Did it fail? Let's see. Again, it's gotta be something with DaVinci Resolve because it did not fail. All right, so here we are on my phone. It plays fine. Yep, that's the end of the clip. So it, it rendered out just fine. All right, just to show you guys the battery life, this one is at 45% now, and this was at full charge and you could see the battery history right here it was at 100 percent charge when i started this test it's now at 45 percent this one i haven't charged in almost two days yesterday at 7 33 a.m i took this off the charger i've been using it since then you know off and on you know i went to work so i didn't touch it for eight hours and then i came and did these tests and right now the battery is at 56 percent so needless to say the battery on this one is amazing this one i go through it constantly. I always felt like I was charging it. That was one of my biggest complaints with the 2018. It wasn't like a typical MacBook Air. This one, honestly, probably get anywhere from 10 to 12 hours editing on it. I edited that whole video on it and I worked with DaVinci Resolve to make the app part of that video and it lasted me all day. I sat in my recliner in my house editing on this machine. Two weeks ago I did a video and you can see that right here on what applications for 3D slicing software, 3D 
programs in general work on this machine. And in my review, I was unsure if I was going to keep the 2020 MacBook M1. I really didn't know, guys, because there were some applications that weren't working. It got buggy. I told you about those problems I had, and I didn't want to go through this with Apple again. But after reinstalling the operating system, they're constantly doing updates. I got two updates in the last two weeks that fixed a lot of problems that I was having with other programs. And honestly, between the battery life, the keyboard, the processing power, because you get eight cores here opposed to two with Intel, no fan, and it's running just as good as my 2015 iMac with 16 gigs of RAM. This is the base model, guys. The base model. And I'm not trying to hype this up like other YouTubers try to do. I am truly impressed, because honestly, there were several times I was going to take this back, because I'm like, it's just not ready. It's just not ready. And then Apple just slap me with, oh, no, we got an update. Oh, no, we got another update. There are glitches, but I'm willing to play with the glitches because this is actually one hell of a machine. I may regret it, and I'll do a video on it if, if this turns out to bite me in and that's why I only go with MacBook Airs because I spent $2,000 on a machine. So here we have entry level machine under $1,000. So now what I'm gonna do with my older machine, still a good machine, does have its bugs, but it's good enough to upgrade my wife from a 2013 to a 2018. I'm gonna gift this to her. I'm gonna sell my wife's machine and get $300 for it and put it towards this machine. It's a win-win for me on that aspect and hopefully this machine will hold off and we'll see how long this is gonna last. Like this, it is a risky thing to do. Apple gives you a one year warranty. After that, you gotta buy Apple Care. And if you watch my channel, you know I don't believe in that. I think you pay enough for this machine. I think they should kind of stand behind their machines. So yes, I am keeping my Mac M1. I am really impressed with this machine. I am actually going to switch everything over to the SSD drive that I'm working with. I will hook up the SSD to this machine, use my 2015 iMac, edit some videos. If the wife wants me in or I got a deadline to hit and I don't want to spend my whole night out here, I can now grab that SSD, go to my recliner, hook it up, and continue editing, spending time with my wife. Yeah, she just likes me in the room. I don't know why. So far, Apple, I'm very happy. I hope it stays that way. I hope that's it for me, guys. If this helped you in any way, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell if you want to get notifications when my videos come out. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. Regardless, we're almost dropping laptops. <sighs> You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just put, putting it out there.